Hello, hello, you're back. Um, sorry, last week I did not make it to uh, do a nail podcast, but we are back this week. Y'all might just get to this week. Um, so if this is your first video, I this is number six. I am doing a podcast solo um, because I haven't found a co-host yet. So if you're interested, hit me up, comment, let me know. But anyways, this is the nail podcast where you get actual information from a licensed nail tech. I reside in the state of Nebraska, Midwest. And if you don't know where that's at, it's right in the middle of the map. Up north from Kansas, directly west from Iowa. So east of Colorado, right in the middle of the map. All right. So today we're going to talk about pricing because um, I see a lot of stuff with new nail techs or if you're a nail enthusiast or if you're somebody that's just hustling and you're slinging nails. A lot of people ask questions about pricing. Feel free to comment um, and let me know what you think. Or you can ask me a question as we're going through here. Um, but pricing, 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 pricing. So how do you determine your prices? Well, it's a lot of factors on this. And I talk about this a lot. So with pricing, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with what you're charging people. If you feel that your work isn't your best work, if you feel like there's some things you still need to learn, then you do not need to try to price yourself with other salons and nail techs and professionals, right? Number one. Um, number two, the question was how to determine your pricing. Number two, so your comfortability level and your expertise, that kind of goes hand in hand. Number two, time. How long does it take you to do a certain thing? Like, okay, so these took me about three hours. Would I charge $50 for these? Hex no, because you want to think hourly how much you're making per hour. Um, kind of set for yourself, you know, how much time does it take per hour? Good job. Um, that could be good, you know, in the beginning, but you're going to have to start, you're going to have to start looking at what's what people are charging around you just because, you know, your clients may come to you and be like, well, I can go so-and-so and get it for cheaper. So yeah, have confidence with what you charge, most definitely. So um, I forgot what I was saying. But yeah, I got in too into the comments. But um, you want to basically look at your product, how much you spend on your product. Do you offer special services? Okay. I'm going to use myself as an example. I do everything. I do press ones. I do pedicures. I do manicures. I do gel. I do poly gel. I do hard UV gel. I do painting on nails. I do everything. Long extendo nails. There's some shops around me that don't even do long nails. They'll say, no, we don't do that. There's some people that don't know how to do ombre. I do. When I say I do everything, it took me a little longer to get comfortable with everything because I was learning everything at once. I do dip powder. So that needs to be factored in and in my pricing. OK, <clears throat> even though if somebody's coming to me and they're just getting regular polish, the fact that I'm a specialty nail tech and I know how to do all these other things needs to be geared into my pricing. Otherwise, if I'm lowballing myself and I'm only charging $20, I'm going to use last year as an example because I used to only charge $20 to do a manicure, right? <clears throat> um, I'm selling myself short because I'm a specialty nail tech and I offer all these other things, whether they embark on it or not. Okay. So a friend of mine, she, uh, there's a nail tech and she's been doing it way longer than me for over a decade. Right. And she was telling me how she had this client. I hope she don't mind me telling this story, but she told me she had a client that she could no longer take because of conflict of schedule. She was charging her X amount of dollars. So when she went to go find another nail tech, she was being charged more and was willing to pay more 
and this person wasn't even licensed, wasn't even licensed. And she was doing practice sets and charging more than a licensed nail tech would. Now you 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 can do what you feel comfortable with. I I, I agree. Um, of Spring Freak, I think that's how your name. That's, that's your name. I agree with you. You can charge whatever you're comfortable with. That's the basis. That's the foundation. See, last year I wasn't comfortable charging ninety dollars for some long C curve tips because. I knew that my shaping wasn't its best, so on and so forth. Okay, but today, let's fast forward a year and a half later. I feel comfortable charging that because I know my worth and I know my work is good. There's people that are willing to pay other, you know, nail techs that aren't as good as you. And, you know, it's so charge what you're worth. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as looking about other people around you, you kind of want to know just for, you know, your own mind. So, you know, that you, first of all, so you know that you're not short changing yourself. There's people around me that are paying $65 for spa manicures and all they're doing is slapping fruit. I ain't gonna say no names. They just slapping fruit on people's legs and calling it you know, they naming it after drinks and stuff. And I'm like, that's absurd. That's crazy. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm charging, let's say my price as of right now is changing November 1st, but $35 for a pedicure. And I'd be nice and throw in the hot stones and the hot towels and make it a spot. I'm going to start, I'm going to stop shortchanging myself. I'm going to start charging what I feel comfortable with because there are people and that's another way to, to determine your clientele. If you are new, like me, <clears throat> I'm trying to find my ideal clientele. So my prices are going to weed and seed out those people that are, you know, those people, you know, those people that go online and they do Groupon and they just, they're looking just for a bargain. They're going to go wherever they're not loyal to anybody because they're just looking for a cheap service for that one time. They're not loyal to anybody. They're just following the bargain. Those, And that's what I've been getting. I've been getting people that's just like, okay, she do a good enough job and her stuff is cheap. I'm going to come to her. But those aren't returning clients. Those aren't people that's booking me every Thursday for the rest of the year. I want those people that are booking with me so I can bet on that money. Okay. Because our time is money. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me drink some tea. Our time is money in the cosmetology uh, field, you know? So a lot of salons, let me tell y'all something. And this is why I don't want to work in a salon because I've learned a lot of salons are geared towards doing the fastest service to get that money. And the time it takes to do something like this, and I know y'all probably can't see that well. Let me shine the light. Ooh, it's too bright. It's just some uh, pink nails. Okay, that's a little better. <clears throat> and the time it takes me to do this, a nail salon could probably get two people, manicure, pedicure, manicure, pedicure. They doubled their money in the time it took me to do this. So that's what salons are thinking. They're not really, some of them are starting to be, but around me in the city that I'm from, a lot of them just want you to come get your shellac manicure, your shellac pedicure, get out the door. They don't want to do designs. They don't want to do bling nails. They don't want to do coil nails. They don't want to do 3D artwork. They don't want to paint on your stuff. So they're trying to just get the, they're trying to just make the money because they got to pay their lights. They got to divide the money up between the, you know, the, the uh, workers that's on uh, not booth rent, but they're on commission. <clears throat> so they're trying to get you in as quick, or they're trying to get you out as quick as they got you to come in through the, through the door. That's the perk about being a home nail tech for me or having my own salon even is because I can actually sit there and design your nails. You can bring me a picture and I can take the time if I want to. Number one, my overhead cost is cut because I'm doing it out of my home. My rent's going to be paid regardless, you know? And so I don't have to charge as much but I'm starting to, I'm starting to, because I have, I wish I could show my camera and I'm going to, I'm actually going to upload a video showing y'all my whole inventory, 
when I say I can go up against the shops, I probably there's some shops that I've been in and I have more stuff than them. Like I took my nail passion very seriously. So I got stuff here on the wall. I got a nail uh, display over there. You know, and I think there's a stigma, too, with people saying that they work out of their home. People automatically tend to think like, oh, well, what can you do? Everything more than what your salon can do. <laughs> you know, so <clears throat> that's all determined in your pricing. That's your worth. So know your worth and be comfortable with what you're charging people. Make sure you're comfortable. I really wish I, I knew how to share my screen and stuff because there's some things I found this great nail blog. There's some great information out there. Um, there's some great groups on Facebook to be a part of, like nail communities. My advice with that, this is kind of a different subject, but my advice with that, if you see people bashing other people's work in that group, get out that group. Don't even support that mess because I've had to do that. I've had people come after my work and all I did was comment on somebody else's stuff and they asked a question. Like one girl got mad at me because she was just like, I've been cleaning my implements with bleach. I talked about this before on here. I just thought it was crazy. And she's like, I'm not licensed, but I've been cleaning my implements with bleach. Honey, if you don't know how to properly clean implements, maybe you need to go to school or just put it down and stop doing it. You're not supposed to, <clears throat> you're not supposed to clean your implements with bleach. You can clean equipment with bleach. And that's what something school will teach you. The difference between the two. Okay. So my nail desk, that's nail equipment. A curette, <clears throat> which I have one. I'm sorry, my voice for some reason got all this phlegm. A curette is an implement. This doesn't use bleach. My desk can. So people need to, you know, take it a little more serious. And you don't necessarily have to go to school, but at least invest in yourself and buy the book off of Amazon and read it. You don't have to, because that's pretty much what I did in school. It wasn't like we had structured classes. Everybody kind of worked at their own pace and read the chapters on their own. So just get the book and at least be knowledgeable. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that way you're not butchering somebody's nails and hurting somebody because your stuff ain't clean properly. So anywho, my next point was keep in mind that your time is your money. In the cosmetology field, your time is your money. So Although, you know, I am a, a specialty nail tech and for us home nail techs, we still have to keep in mind that time is money for anybody. Really, nobody wants to come and sit in your chair for five hours for something that should have taken half that time. OK, so make sure that you're constantly moving, you know, and I had to learn this, too, because I'm comfortable. I'm in my zone. I'm in my space, you know, a portion of my home. but. I'm still going to treat it professionally because I've heard horror stories about people taking too long. And that's why a lot of people don't like going to home nail techs because, oh, they want to get up and cook or they want to talk to their kids. Or they want, uh uh, my child knows when I'm, this is my job. When I'm at work, <clears throat> she said, yes, I have no problem with you calling people out like that. It's ridiculous the amount of misinformation out there and people who think they are educated without the training. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe. I like you too. I like you a lot because <laughs> it's just, it is like there is. Okay. So, Oh, I'm jumping the gun, but I was just saying that my son knows when I'm at my desk, I'm at work, even if I'm in my house, but okay. So this group, there's people that will have broken nails I mean, their nail look nasty, like they need to go to the hospital. And there's people telling them to put peroxide. Oh, now this, I know this because my mom is was a nurse. She was a nurse. And even she would tell me to put peroxide on my source. But one day I looked it up. Because I know a lot of people think that peroxide is better because it don't burn like alcohol. Well, peroxide is a type of solution that opens things up even more. I forgot the term for it. If you put peroxide in something that's really like a really bad wound, it's going to clean it out and make it open more. You don't want that when you're bleeding profusely. You want something that's going to clean it, but help it heal. So I've been trying to teach people and I'm like a, <clears throat> a lone wolf in this. Peroxide is used to clean out like your teeth. If you look on the bottle, it's an oral solution. You know, it's a whitening agent too. You can dye your hair. 
it eats up things. So if you have a nail that is missing, please don't pour peroxide on it. Just go to the doctor or put cold water on it, Neosporin and a bandage. I've had, I've seen people say like, rip your nail off. Don't do that. Yes. Just because they've been doing it for X amount of time. Um, no, exactly. Like there's so much misinformation out there. And my thing is <clears throat> too, by me being a home nail tech, I can take my time and actually consult because it they train us in school. I don't know if you're a licensed nail professional or not, but they train us in school to have a consultation, especially with your new clients. You need to know if they have any sensitivities, if they're allergic to anything. So I try to at least take two to five minutes and consult. And I have a little notebook and I showed this the last time, but I don't know where my little notebook went. But I have a little notebook. Oh, it's in my bag because I packed it up. I have a little notebook where new clients, I just write down a few things, you know, and I can make client cards because actually in my textbook, you can Xerox or photocopy some contact cards um, and like their consultation cards. So you have a little information about them, you know, OK, so this person is allergic to rose. They can't use rose oil. I have people that are like that, you know, um, so you don't mess around and just be talking and put cuticle rose oil and jack them up. It's important to consult with your clients, especially new or old. You never know if somebody develop some kind of illness or something, or, you know, they just get diagnosed with diabetes so they can't feel heat and on their feet like that. Um, that way you don't burn them with the pedicure water. It's important. And a lot of salons, they just pop you in that chair, pop you out. So I love and I take pride in being my own nail tech, my own business, you know. Um, even if you don't have an actual LLC, treat your nail business like a business. Treat it, you know, treat your license. Even if you're not licensed and you do nails, treat it like it's your brand because it is. You know, people go off of your services. So give the best service that you can. And if you know you're giving bomb service and you're doing bomb nails on top of that, charge what you're worth. Okay. So now um, I'm on speaking of pedicures. That was a good segue into this next topic and some pedicure foot tips and tricks. So I'm going to grab something real quick. This is my bathroom. I'm going to grab something really fast. I'm going to be right back. And I should have done this for the item of the week. Um, so tips and tricks. Walmart sells it's got a little dust on it because <laughs> I have so much sugar scrub. But Walmart sells this stuff for six dollars. I really hate that y'all can't see. My light is so bright. So it's Shea Sugar Scrub and it's by Tree Hut. This is at every Walmart. Y'all know where they have the nail polish and all the girly, like the hair products and stuff like that. That's the area that I got this in. And I use this personally. This is my personal. And then I have some that I bought for my salon. So y'all want to keep y'all feet in between getting pedicures. Y'all want to keep your feet with as, as moisturized and as least amount of dead skin. That way, when you go get your pedicure, you're not sitting there for 45 minutes because we're trying to exfoliate all that dead skin. Keep your feet moisturized in between pedicures. Trust me. And I have those clients that listen to me and they do it and they I get them out in 30 minutes. They get a pedicure, boom, done. Because it's, it's nothing for me to put gel polish on and, you know, that process. But what takes the longest is exfoliating and prepping. And we have to get all that dead cuticle. We have to get all that dead skin because we can put polish on all day long. But if our feet are jacked and they're crusty and they look like horse hooves, I'm not talking about nobody because mine look like horse hooves right now. I need to go do this. Use sugar scrub. When you take a shower, you can scrub. When you take a bath, just take some of this. And it actually keeps your feet moisturized. You just rinse it off with water. So after you wash up and clean yourself, you want to do it on clean skin. Get y'all some of this. It's only six bucks. Walmart. Okay. Use scrubs and sugar scrub or whatever in between pedicure 
visits, okay? It'll help your pedicurist out so much. So that's one tip. Um, another tip I would say is, y'all gonna get me for this, but I'm gonna be real with y'all. I don't care if y'all have to take a bobby pin. Go underneath y'all toenails and get that dead skin because that's nasty. That's nasty. I, I'm, I'm shocked and appalled that I even have to say this to anybody, but make sure y'all are getting that dead skin. And, you know, like in the winter months when we're wearing boots and socks and things like that, that lint calcifies underneath your hyponychium, the free edge of your toenails. Make sure y'all at least scooping that out. Because I've been modified with some of the things I see. And it's like, not really because I've been dealing with feet since I was a little girl. I used to do my mom pedicures all the time. But it it, it it still shocks me the amount of people that don't clean up under their fingernails and toenails. Like, y'all can't feel that? Like, I feel it. So I just naturally, you know, if I'm eating some chicken wings or something, it happens. Stuff get under our nails. It happens. We're human, right? But I can feel it. And it doesn't feel right. Another tip and trick, and I talked about this on another podcast, these little brushes, they sell these at the dollar store. These little brushes. Make sure I have a whole bunch of these and I use them for my clients. I use them. I have some that I have personally for myself. If you got long nails, long fake ones, long natural ones, make sure y'all keep this by your sink. Okay. Okay. Because like I said, yesterday I ate chicken wings. I had some B-dubs, right? That stuff was all under my nails. I just took the brush. Don't wait till y'all go and get y'all nails done. And I'm picking old barbecue from three weeks ago out your nails. That is so disgusting, bruh. Like, just get a brush. Dollar Tree. Okay? Just get under y'all nails. Okay? That goes for the toes, too. Brush y'all toes when you take a bath. And I know there's a lot of people that have this myth that baths are nasty. Actually, baths are good for your skin. Us women, we need to just soak in hot water. Even if you get up and shower after you soak, take a good 20, 30 minute soak in hot water. Put your oils, your essential oils or whatever, bubble bath if you want. I can't take bubble baths because it breaks me out. But that soaking and all dirt is not bad for your skin. Actually, it's bad to take all the dirt, strip all the oils out your skin. Then you're going to have eczema. You're going to be prone to eczema. You're going to be prone to all types of stuff. So let me read these comments. I'm always having to clean off crud off people. <laughs> Other texts just don't do it either. Yeah. You know, it's something that we can do. Like that's a part of washing our hands, but a lot of people don't think about it, you know. Um, but yeah, wash your, get under there. And your toenails, you can buy one of these curates. Once again, the Dollar Tree. They sell all types of stuff at the Dollar Tree. It's amazing. I didn't get this one from the Dollar Tree, but they got all types of little tools that you can get up under there. Get that out of there. But I'm also finding that people are really lazy, too. Yes, that part. Girl, I like you. I like you. I just like to be honest. You know, honesty is the best policy and the truth shall what set you free. There's too many people out here lying and faking the funk, and I just cannot. That's why I started this, honestly, because I'm like, dude. Okay, so those are some of my tips. So use sugar scrub, invest in brushes and curettes, Dollar Tree. Five bucks, you go to Dollar Tree, you could probably even get some sugar scrub at Dollar Tree, too. Five dollars. You're worth five dollars, okay? All you need is five dollars. Okay, so my next topic is my Amazon pick for this week. And Amazon gets me in trouble. Oh, my gosh. Now, I go to my local supply store and get my stuff, too. But, honey, Amazon, a lot of my stuff have come from Amazon, and it's nothing wrong with it. When I really started out doing nails, I wish Amazon was around. Like, when I was just trying to get into stuff, because Sally's didn't have acrylic. Sally's didn't have monomer. You know, and I, back when I was like out of high school, you could only get that stuff if you were licensed. They didn't sell monomer and acrylic powders. Like in the late 90s, in the late 90s, they didn't sell, early 2000s, they didn't sell stuff. There wasn't no Amazon. Amazon was around, but it wasn't big like that. And you had to still have a license at one point on Amazon to even buy nail stuff. So now, oh my gosh, I don't mind doing tutorials 
for the people out there that want to do their own nails and explore with nail stuff, I encourage that. I encourage it, but I'm just not going to give y'all the whole game for free. I'm going to give you enough and then you need to learn it, you know, because that's what I had to do. But my Amazon pick for the week is this hollow glitter that I got. This holographic glitter. Oh, you can see my nails now right there in that way. I did some little Halloween nails. They go in the dark. But anyways, this holographic glitter, I have yet to try it. It's by Beatles and it's $6.99. So the other ones that I bought, let me show y'all. They were like a... Where are you at? That's just lucky not to be able to. Okay, here we go, right here. The other ones I bought, I got this big old bag. They're not as they're not as chromey as I would like. They're cute still though, but they're not as chromey. So I got all this that I'm trying to use. But this is my pick of the week because I'm excited to use it to see. And none of these are holographic. They're just chrome powders. But this is a holographic chrome powder. So that's my pick of the week from Amazon. Um, and it's by Beatles. I love Beatles. They're starting to get more stuff. Um, more like they have curing lamps. They have poly gel. They have acrylic. They have A-Press. Um, they have all types of stuff. Uh, Beatles. So this also leads me into my brand of the week. My brand of the week is Model Ones because they really do have everything. Model Ones has acrylic dip. Um, I'm trying to think some of the stuff I got. They have poly gel. They have lamps. They have brushes. I have a whole bunch of Model One stuff too that I got off of Amazon. So people are saying, you know, are asking what brand? I'm new nail tech. I'm a new nail tech. What brand do I start off with? Honey, just pick one because there's a lot of good brands out there. And Glam and Glitz, I'm still not really a fan of, but I've learned how to. It's, it depends on the, the monomer, like this one. These little jars is $13 a pop. And I could not figure out. I could not figure out how to get this to work because they were coming out thick. I have to use a certain certain monomer with this. And I don't think they sell monomer. They might, but don't quote me. Glam and Glitz, let me know if you think, if you if you know they sell monomer, let me know because I need to get their monomer because I was battling with this at first. And this was like the first acrylic that I bought from my nail supply store. And I didn't like it. I liked the colors, but I didn't like how it was being laid. So even if there's something, I say all this to say this, even if there is something that you don't like in the beginning, don't toss it out. Don't give it away. Keep it. Try different monomers or different methods. Another example was with some poly gel that I had bought. I didn't like it because it was streaking. Savalins, actually. Savalins poly gel. It was their rainbow kit. And here's one of the, so when I was using their slip solution that came in this kit, and this is just the yellow one. Um, this is also on Amazon too. It was making the poly gel have like white lines in it. Use alcohol for a slip solution or base coat gel. Any base coat gel, like I got this jealous base coat. You can use that as a slip solution for poly gel, or you can use uh, rubbing alcohol, but their slip solution will make it streaky and white. So don't throw your stuff away. Just start somewhere. If it's something that's within your budget, because all of us have different budgets. I know when I started out, I was broke. Okay. Before quarantine happened, I wasn't even working. So I was broke. So I used a little bit of my STEMI money to start buying things and playing around with them off of Amazon. So really it's just what's in your budget. Savalins is very like, I think a kit of these and it came with seven, it came with a foul, it comes with the picker and the brush. It was like 25 bucks or less, $21. And this might look like a little tube, but I've gotten multiple uses out of this and it's still pretty full. A little bit goes a long way. 
with gel anything. UV gel, poly gel, gel polish. You don't need a whole lot of it. So don't get discouraged like, oh, I'm only getting a little bit for this much. Um, I could probably get at least four full sets out of this for some medium length nails, medium to short. Oh yeah, four, four sets confidently out of this. So it's all about what you can afford, but there's some very good brands. Astound Beauty is another one, but Model Ones is my pick this week because they have dip and dap. They have phenomenal sales. Now, one thing I will say, I believe they're based out of China or somewhere. It takes a minute to get your package. If you order from their website. Now, if you order from Amazon, you get it like that, like that. They have better stuff on their website, though, and they're always running deals. So Model Ones, I'm going to focus just on them this week. Those are my, that was one of my first brands that I had purchased and I like them a lot. So, okay. So, and the last thing that I'm going to discuss on this live, um, on this podcast is nails that are trending. And if you want to comment some that you've seen and that you were just blown away by, um, but of course, Halloween nails is big, right? But Halloween breast cancer nails. I've been seeing a lot of those. That's what inspired this look. I know y'all really can't see. See, I got my little pink. Everything is pink on here, except for the nail itself is white. My little Frankenstein, my little pumpkin, and then my little drips. I don't know if I can see the light is real bright. Okay, so it's like a real light pink. So that is what I thought was like, that is genius because you're doing two things at once. You're doing Halloween spooky, but it's very much giving breast cancer, Suji, Susan G. Coleman support. You know what I mean? So I'm like, that's dope. And I've never seen that any other year. Maybe y'all have, but this year I was just like, that's different. I'm going to do it. I saw it on Instagram. Um, and on Pinterest, and I'm just like, this is dope. Now, I don't know this young lady's name, but I need to I need to shout her out because her nails are bomb. On uh, these are these are the hands down cartoon characters have been big this year. Beetlejuice, I've seen SpongeBob Halloween nails. So these are some things that are trending for October. Okay. This chick did Courage the Cowardly Dog, and she killed it. Oh, my God. Like, I got to go in here and see, because I uh, she hearted my comment. I just said, that's true talent. Like, chick is talented. Um, I don't know who did them, but it's under the hashtag nail porn. Um, dang, I wish I knew who did these nails so I can shot her out. Posted by nail. Oh, nails by nails by dev. So it's nails with a Z underscore by underscore D E V. Shots out to that person. I don't know if it's a male or female because males be getting down with the nails too. Let me turn this light off. I don't know if y'all can really see that, but oh my God. Those are spooky and those are tight. So go under the hashtag nail porn because I follow that hashtag. Okay, she got the girl backing up, but it's a video. I'm trying to get the story I could see. This her working on it. Oh my God. Mad talented. Mad talented. And this looks like she's using gel polish too. Whew. Man, I wish I can go and like it again. Like she, that's my goal. I have been drawing on nails, um, but I was using, back in the day, I was using regular polish. Then just last year, I was using acrylic paint and you got to wait for the acrylic paint to dry and ugh, gel polish is where it's at. So if you're going to do nail art, use gel polish. Just use any shellac gel polish. The lines are going to be more fluid. It's just easier. Then when you top coat it, it just looks bomb. Those were sick. So that, hands down, she won 2021 Spooky Nail Contest. That's unheard of. It's it's, it's a it's a contest going, but ain't nobody. 
you know, because people under her comment was like, these are the best nails I've seen thus far. So in our mind, we're comparing nails, you know, so it's like an unspoken contest. Um, but she won. So nails by Dev. Congratulations, girl. Those nails were sick. I want those. I don't even like Courage to Cowardly Dog because that cartoon used to scare me. But it's fitting. It's spooky. So I remember it, though. I used to try to get into that cartoon, but I couldn't. So, all right, y'all. Thank you so much. Shouts out to Offspring Freak for commenting. Girl, I do these every boy or girl. I don't know if you're a girl. I'm just, I like saying girl. So everybody girl. Don't, don't take offense. But um, I do these every week. Since I didn't do a podcast last week, I will be coming back. Don't give me the line. Either Thursday or Friday this week. But just make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell. It'll let you know when I go live. Um, and we can have another nail discussion. If you have any topics that you want to talk about, make sure you just comment them. Let me know if there's something you want to chit chat about or if you want me to go over. I'm very open. I am looking for a co-host. So thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. God bless you all and peace. Till next time. Keep those nails slayed. Bye, y'all.